Hey y'all, welcome to Saguaro Farm. Um, last week we met up with our friend Reese Bickerdyke and he gave us a rundown on a goat processing workshop. He runs Kiko Goats up in the hills here in uh, Arizona. He had two weathers to process and butcher and he wanted to bring us along and show us the process of humanely butchering and extracting meat and gutting those uh, goats. We got some excellent footage we want to take you along with us and show you the process and what we learned. And he did a really good guide for us and we want to put it up here on YouTube. So follow along and enjoy. All those little moments. My name is Reese Pickerdike. I have a degree in wildlife management and biology. I've been raising goats in Arizona for seven years at this point. Um, I'm with Rocking AR Goats. Awesome, sounds great. We're gonna um, tie off its ankles to that hoist while it's still its rear um, to that hoist. Lift it up off the ground slightly, shoot it in the head, lift it all the way off the ground, cut its throat, let it bleed out, slide it over, tie it off. Then we're gonna slide that hoist down a little bit and do the next one. And the hoist you have set up is like a just a rope with a, like tied onto this pole, rope and pulley. Very, very simple. <laughs> this uh, one is really wild. Uh, uh, these are two. Uh, these are two weathers. Two bucks or weathers? Weathers, so they're castrated males. Oh, okay. Um, we ca if they're not going to be breeding stock, uh -huh. we castrate them so they can continue to run with the herd. Okay. Um, we only allow 10% of our male goat population to remain intact, and that's okay. based on the quality of the animal. What do you do with the males? Um, are they they're not with the herd regularly? The breeding males. The breeding males, yeah. The breeding males are penned at home. Yeah. They're penned at home, and you bring them out selectively every year or so for kidding and stuff. Yeah, so we, breeding. Okay. Um, try to expose one male a year so that we can run a, a larger herd. Okay. Um, and we alternate males so that we cool. can diversity. Very cool. Awesome. Once you get them up in the air, yep. You take this. You twist it over like that. Uh -huh. And do it again. So you go twist, two twist, twist, and then you can put it on there and tighten off like that. Okay. okay. But we want to get them up higher. Okay. Perfect. Um, so that was that. That twist knot is what I did as an initial, just like hold them while we're working because it's really quick to come undone. Mm -hmm. Um. Now we're just gonna cut his throat, let him bleed out for a minute, okay. and tie him off. Real simple. Yep. Let's have a major jugular. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna find the jugular, cut it, and just let him bleed out. Bleed out. Please. Got him? Rest. Okay. Um, when you're butchering, you can cut right here uh -huh, uh -huh. below the tendon and just tie off there. Oh, gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. So we can do that on the other leg just for learning. So you come in here, cut through that, oh, I cut see, yeah. a two inch slit. Uh -huh. and so you're going to want to have it. enough. Yeah, you need enough string to come through that. And if you can get it started, we can lift. Oh. Got him? I guess. It's like more of a square knot. Anything but it should work. Yeah. Yeah. So you save the tendon, you're cutting between the tendon and, and the, the bone. bone. Okay, perfect. And you're just coming up to that. Okay, yep. 
Right there. Yeah. All right. Do you want to do the other side? Sure. And so you can see how much wider yeah. a bar will get him. Oh, for sure. That's nice. Did I do it in that though? Did I not? Just a little chunk. I don't think so. It would go. He'd be bleeding more. Am I terrible? <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're cutting his windpipe. Okay. This is. Can I see your hand? Yes. So you feel that like roll? That's actually the jugular. Oh, it's not. I feel that too. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So that's what you want to cut. If you accidentally cut the windpipe, it doesn't matter, but you're actually trying to cut the jugular. Roll. Jeez. There's the blood coming out. Like, and... <laughs> nice job, honey. <laughs> so okay. obviously they'll continue to drain as we're working. Yeah. That's what you want. So probably that little paring knife is the equivalent to Reese's knife there, you know? Yeah. And it's, so I use <clears throat> about a four inch blade. I brought another one in case you didn't have one, but that's honestly for like most of your camp work. Yeah. That's what I find is your general preferred blade. Okay. And so, but what I keep, me personally for blades, yeah. I keep about a four inch blade and then uh -huh. I keep a machete. I keep a two foot machete. Okay. The machete works for hacking or any larger cuts. Oh, sure. You would need to do um, And this is going to be your like general use knife for, for this and anything. And then you brought a sawzall for the bones, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Oops, sorry. Here. Take your hand. Mm -hmm. Cut like that. Cut okay. down that way. So what you're looking for, your blade has a taper, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so what you're trying to do is match that taper just barely to that. Oh, and okay. just like, think like you're shaving off the thinnest layer. Does, Does that make sense? Yeah. And you want to, yeah, like if you have a stick, you're only doing this. Uh huh. You want to do the whole blade. Every t every cut. Yes. So draw it across. Like Drawn. Yeah. Beautiful. You're always going to start at the top, work your way down. You'll start by stripping the hide, and then you'll do meat. So you'll okay. strip the hide down to the head neck region so about as far down as you can get because there'll be a point where you have to actually start cutting the hide so remember that you've cut this tendon right so when you're doing this hide you have to be mindful not to actually cut through that tendon or you're going to drop the animal what we're going to do is we're going to come to a leg and we're just going to come and start circling it and you can kind of push on the section that's meat but you don't want to push on that tendon right That's how to think about it. Yeah, well, you're, yeah, you're lifting the hide. Okay. Off the meat. Off the meat, yeah. And the bone and all of it. The next cut you're gonna make is from that. Mm -hmm. Come down to his nipples uh -huh. in a diagonal cut, kind of like this. Okay. And you're actually gonna stop like above them, but that like aim at the nipples. Here. Okay. And remember, you don't want to cut your meat, so you're trying to mm. cut hide. and pull the hide off the meat where you can. So about like that. Um, pull good. your, <laughs> stick your finger in. And separate it and yeah, more. and then cut next to like this. Oh, okay. Oh, nice, okay. So that you're putting tension on the hide basically okay. and separating as a your hand back here, mm -hmm. you can feel the boundaries between the organ and the muscle. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you can see how deep you need to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha, yeah. Legs, mm -hmm. like right there. Mm -hmm. So you're just gonna take your knife and go zip. Okay. Nice, so, go yeah. to one side of the penis, doesn't super matter. Don't puncture the stomach. You need okay. to stay above the muscle.
So Reese, is this part of the hide, um, like, do we want to separate from here or do we want to go under this layer? Is this still hide, hide right here? So this looks like, when in doubt, just start pulling. <laughs> Cut this back. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you can start, so that's the chest. That's oh, okay. The chest. Yeah. So, so this is like the, under the lower layer of hide we still need to get through. Just um, just start working back and see what happens. The yeah. <laughs> well, and don't. So that's his urine. Mm -hmm. Oh right. Really don't mess with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can break this layer. Uh huh. Don't break those layers. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like a protective layer on the outside. They're yeah. like, eh. But yeah, just start <clears throat> working down him. Legs and come to his Oops, my hand. Wrapping it. There you go. Cool. Kind of like to there, I guess. So now we'll cut out the butt hole. So I like to start at the tail. So like right there. Okay. And then carve around. And the thing is, you can easily, because you can push down here. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Right? The tail comes off, I don't care. Sure. Um, but you don't want to cut the roast, right? You don't want to cut the meat. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're just trying to put the outer rim. Uh, how's that look? Like, is that pretty like pretty much what we're looking for? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And if it's not, we can when we get Keep to it, up. we can free it up. Keep going. All right. Um, so now we're gonna grab this section between the legs and try and pull it off. So we're trying okay. to get to his back. Do we need to like cut the bone here or something, or does it just come off? Uh, okay. You need to find a joint between two vertebrae. And cut. cut it, okay. And separate that whole thing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Pull. Keep pulling. He doesn't feel it, I swear. <clears throat> Uh-huh. We're gonna do 
separate them there, yeah. Cut, well, I'm cut down to the bone. Do you do it above, like above the joint, right? Like I did on this one? Yeah. Okay, right, right there. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna come to the like, as far up as we can. Uh huh. Is that tension? Yeah, we need to start with the knife. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> cut through as much, cut through the bone as much as you can. Okay. Little yeah. knife right there. The windpipe and stuff. That's like a beautiful piece of meat. Beautiful animal right there. All natural. Yeah. Just try and slowly open this. Again, remember that bladder. Don't yeah, do that not, bladder. Don't okay. put your knife in there. Like. <laughs> okay. You gotta be careful around the chest too. You really don't want to punch the stomach. Puncture anything in there? Yeah. Dang. So try and get it. That's probably good. Okay. Just kind of try and open it a little bit. Just kind of try and pull it into the trash bag. If you go a little bit further, again, try not to mix that's, the organ. So that's like all the rumens, like, or the yeah, multiple stomachs and stuff, huh? Yeah. Yep. A tiny little puncture there, maybe. Yeah. It's okay, though. Yeah. But didn't, you're trying to avoid dumping meat. it. Right. And then try and dump out the, at least the digestive organ. Yep. As much as we can. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll just dump it in here and then we'll sort. That's the bladder, that yeah. full sack there. You want to really prefer not to pop it. Sometimes you Any can't help stuff, it, but yeah. you really don't want to. I'm just gonna set this off so it doesn't. <laughs> someone's gonna eat the organs. I don't want this to bathe at all. Oh right, heck no. And then this will check how good your butthole cut was. Oh yeah, because you pull it back through this way. That makes sense. So sometimes you have to kind of get your knife up in there. Yeah. Finish off the cut. Yeah. This is always the annoying part. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I saw it. Free all that, and start just carving stuff off, dumping it down into the bag. Yep, so this is the diaphragm, we're just moving around the diaphragm. Nice. Bit the diaphragm. Yep. Wow, that is like beautiful meat and 
That's so cool. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come to the spine. So you'll feel, you can see the high part of the spine. Mm -hmm. You're gonna cut down as close as you can to it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get the full. And what you actually, with experience, are able to see the different cuts. Oh yeah. And can start seeing the actual different, um, the way the muscle fibers are developed and grow. And that correlates to like consistency. So, so for example, that's a different cut, right? Uh-huh. So you might set that in your, what I call chop pile. Okay. Or like ground pile. Which is still good meat, but it's a. Uh, it's not. It's not your steaks. It's, it's like a random rows. pile. Yeah. It's definitely still good meat. Uh huh. And so you're just gonna work down and try and follow that muscle. So you know, That's a little steak right there. Isn't it? So you would trim it. Yeah, it's trim the really, fat and stuff. Well, so it's silver skin. It's, oh, this silver. Fat. That's silver skin. Okay. Yeah, this is the connective tissue. Okay. Um, but you'd trim it. So we got a chop pile. So chop is just ground chopped. Gotcha. Stewed like generic meat. Okay. Get the meat off. Yeah, get it smaller so you can take it home. <laughs> Want to organize it? Right, right. Is this anything? Or skin. Like right here. Oh okay. no, that's meat. Okay. I would yeah. cut like right here. Mm -hmm. So what you can end up with, depending on how you want to prep it, mm -hmm. you can end up with a whole leg, uh -huh. right? And do like um, a frequent thing is Hispanic cultures is to roast them, slow roast them over like a fire. A whole, whole roast leg, yeah. Well, a whole roast goat. A whole goat, yeah. yeah like, that's a lot for mm -hmm. unless you're throwing a party. That's quite a bit of yeah. meat. Yeah. Or you got a big family. So like you could just roast the leg. Right. Right. Be a little more um, manageable. And the other thing, which, oh yeah, no, no. there's a high hip bone. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Which you're gonna feel that you want to work around. So, remember that pocket I told you about? There's a pocket on the legs. Remember? Yes. See how that oh. muscle overlaps what we're butchering out? So you want to stop? Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll take the leg off. So remember, I've seen different groups. Different cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Then come around here and grab this meat. I think the, okay. And you're just gonna zip, zip, zip. Okay. Cut it off. Mm -hmm. Follow in the muscle groups. Mm -hmm. At the ribs. Yeah. Okay. And then get your leg. Okay. Get the, yeah. And so then you'll start looking like cleaning up the leg, right? So like. Yeah. Um, so if you look, I just took that off. Right, okay. All that meat off and just made a fillet out of it instead. Well, you would... Remember, it's rib meat. Right, rib right. Rib meat on, on, like, beef is not tender. Right, right. So you that's your, like, chopped, ground, stew. Meat there, okay. So you're going to come here, cut this off again. It's following those muscles, right? Okay. So then we're going to follow along the ribs. Just hug. It's, it's following the anatomy as closely as you can, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. Okay. And then once you pull that off, you'll cut about right there. Okay. And you'll cut about right there. Okay. And then you'll we'll have a leg. Cool. Okay. Clean it up a little bit. It's not. 
again, you're not doing your like final cuts. You're doing your like rough cuts. Yeah. You can make a steak out of that. Right. Um, but you'd be like, carne asada. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, or stew or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of the times you can chop. Yeah, I gotcha. This is like your, put it on the slow cooker, right? Right, yeah. Marinate it. You clean up that little guy. Marinate it, season it, put it on the slow cooker, and then pull off, make some tacos or something. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Free up one leg. Once you get kind of cut it around, uh -huh. kind of cut around, right? Yep. Down to the hip. And the hip bone. Once you get the hip, kind of twist it, pop it out. Right. It might hang on a little bit, and then just cut it off. See this leg. It's like a beautiful goat leg. Yeah. There's like a Ugh. lot. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we learned a ton. If you have anything to add or if you have any questions, just feel free to write them in the comment section and we can go even go ask Reese himself or we'll try to get back to your questions as soon as we can. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you like homesteading, give our channel a subscribe. We come out with homesteading content frequently. Thanks so much for watching Saguaro Farm. So my wife and I, our first date, yeah. I had just killed an elk <laughs> and I invited her over to help me tan its hide. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people I tell that story to and they go, wow, that's pretty bold for a first date. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, we're going to find out real quick. Right. <laughs>